first speaker uh, this afternoon is uh, Thomas Kreuzig, and he will talk on categories of line operators and BOAs. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you very much for inviting me. It's really nice to be invited back again. Uh, I'm mostly working on uh, UAs and greater tensor categories. And I and they, these appear a lot in, in physical uh, theories and higher dimensional gauge theories. And uh, it is in general quite a hard uh, question to understand what kind of uh, categories were. Uh, appear there, and so my talk will be uh, about the intuition about what type of categories do appear. So, um, and that this will be an overview of all. Maybe it will be. Okay, so in, uh, in, in general, if you have a physical. Uh, System, we have our symmetry that we might use some algebra or some group, and uh, VOAs uh, are an important example of this because VOAs are the symmetries that arise from two dimensional. And then, like, while usually your uh, symmetries are not that big in a two dimensional conformity theory, you at least have an infinite dimensional real algebra symmetry, the symmetry of the uh, you know, solar algebra. And uh, that makes the two dimensional conformity theories very interesting in the respect that, in, in principle, they are exactly the solvable. Well, of course, in, in, in symmetry. And usually, this asymmetry is more than just the square of algebra, and this bigger structure is the part of what it can be, which is my previous. Okay. And uh, now, VOAs arose a long time ago, and uh, more modernly, we're not only ones that kind of modules, what kind of objects um, appear, but also what kind of position structure do we have. So, for example, there are these modules kind of in canvas structure. Or in, in, in general, we just want to combine all the structure into a category, a representation category of the modules, and we want to uh, study this. And in particular, these, these categories, not only these algebras have appeared in higher dimensional system, but the category and finer structure of this category, like, like a braiding or other things have appeared. And uh, so um, the, the problem is, of course, the more finer structure you want to find, the more harder your problem becomes. And uh, in particular, the, the type of categories that appear in current systems are not. Um, I mean, it's extremely hard to understand what, uh, what they are. On the other hand, if you come from physics, a, a physical theory is often given, for example, by some Lagrangian, and then you can split your Lagrangian into some simple part and complete more complicated part. And you can think about it as, as the simple part giving you some kind of field term of your story. And a, a similar type of story also works for the small UA setting. That means you kind of always have a, a nice structure sitting on the top, and you, you hope that it governs a lot of your of your uh, structure that you are eventually interested. And so, what my talk is about is uh, uh, that uh, the the VOAs that uh, that appear in in, in the, the, the modern context usually always allow for free field variations. And I want to explain to you in what sense the free field algebra together with some additional structure, somehow completely recovers the complicated category of features. Um, so the, the, the idea is somehow to find a simpler algebra inside the, the, the structure. And um, if uh, you would take a course about your A's, then in the syllabus, probably it would uh, be written that the requirement is a good understanding of the theory, because we think about uh, the your A is some kind of Natural continuation of say F F I D algebra, um, and uh, so I thought I would just tell you what my picture uh, boiled down to S L two would be. S L two we all know is three dimensional real algebra for the phases. We need for this phases element E F H H for the diagonal part the Cartan sub algebra, and in particular the Cartan sub algebra is nothing but a one dimension <coughs> abelian algebra. So it is as simple as it can be, right? 
and uh, of course, uh, what is SL2 itself? It's a three dimensional representation of this well, uh, one dimensional algebra. So, in particular, we can view SL2 as a three dimensional object inside this representation. Pattern. And we also have a smaller structure, for example, that's the algebra generated by a mean. We can pass to the universal developing algebra, it could be just polynomials in a, in a single variable. Like so each polynomial take, uh, carries a degree under the part of some algebra. And um, I mean, the, of course, you don't really use this in order to do representation theory of SL2. The point I want to make is that uh, this is the, the, the classical picture. I want to, and, uh, and this type of uh, structure and test it turns out for, for, the, for the much more complicated world that helps you a lot. I also wanted to say there are a kind of a converse. Uh, uh, Point of view, as a as a group cannot only be viewed as an extension of a very simple structure, and it's part of subalgebra. Uh, can, you can also you also know as a Lie algebra. Lie algebra arises naturally as invariant vector field by the Lie e group. That means as differential operators. And so that means in particular, your Lie algebra can always be viewed as subalgebra of an algebra of differential operators. Again, algebra of differential oper operators is some kind of very um, simple structure, and so you, uh, uh, you, what you want to do is you, you want to, to do use uh, similar concepts, but for the word itself, it was for some kind of computer. Okay, so I don't know who she knows what the word itself is. Um, this is not even the complete uh, definition. What it wants to do is it wants to. Uh, formalize the notion of what the chiral algebra of the two dimensional conformal field theory should be. So it should be a space of state, a uh, big vector space V, together with a state field of our uh, correspondence. That means for every, field, uh, for every vector in the vector space, you um, associate the field. It's here in this case, the formal power series uh, with uh, coefficients operators on the vector space. And then we want to have some additional structure here uh, for, for the for the VOA structure. This this identity is the, uh, the most important one. It's called locality. And you, you can read it, right? It, it looks like a field commute. And you should think about it as long as they are uh, uh, separated space time, then then the field commute for the quantum. And it turns out that this locality um, implies that um, the vertical operator algebra has some operator product algebra for family of, of algebra structures. Um, anyway, um, I just wanted you to, to, to see the definition for those who, who haven't seen that. And um, of course, if you have an algebra, you're not particularly interested in the algebra itself, but in the representation theory. And what should be a representation? It should be a very similar structure, again, in the vector space. Together with fields on it, but now um, uh, 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 that act on this vector space. And then you even want to, be, uh, to have more because you also want to have fields that intertwine between the different uh, representations. They are called then intertwining fields or intertwining operators. And these are the things that the physicists call the fields of a conformal field theory. Because these are the things to use to, to build non trivial correlation functions. And um, for the mathematician, these correlation functions are also the key thing. These are certain, uh, see, the, the, the fields are uh, uh, endomorphism of the interfinal value, value formal power series. And then if you, uh, uh, if you do some pairing of those, you, you get the functions in this formal variables that maybe uh, actually become meromorphic functions. And then, uh, but uh, depending on in which order you define your correlation, take your correlation functions, these uh, these these uh, meromorphic functions are not usually not the same, but you can somehow meromorph because they converge in different regions. And it turns out that this meromorphic combination is the key thing of the of the deeper structure of the representation theory of vertex algebra because what uh, it is what it defines. A monoidal structure and analytic continuation of the correlation. So the, 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 the idea is very, uh, very much from physics. In particular, 
you would say the axioms of physics imply that the representation property of a view A must be a graded and that it must be um, uh, even a ribbon category. Unfortunately, that's something that's very hard to do for the whole, but it should hold on all that. Um, because the standard product is defined in terms of analytic continuation of correlation, it's not uh, uh, things like associativity or familiarity. They usually never hold on the nodes that are up to, um, up to isomorphisms, and that makes it into, puts it into quite interesting categories. Yeah. So, um, as a physicist, you would say a category of models of the vertex that you all that should be a ribbon category. I don't, I, I want to give an overview of about many things on sketch. So, the ribbon category is a category that has a, that has a tender product, that has a tender by functor that uh, uh, satisfies the usual coherence properties. This is a tender product that is associated uh, up to natural isomorphisms. Um, and then, uh, but uh, because you also want uh, taking different orders of fields to your isomorphic answer of this kind of product to also be muted up to isomorphism, so it is called grading. And then uh, you want other structures, uh, you want to have rules because you want to be able to take traces. And then there's a balancing for Hattie, which this is another part of Hattie, which is actually totally automatic. Okay, um, now, um, even if you haven't heard about uh, vertex algebras uh, that much, you they 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 found uh, their place in in history. Uh, they arose with string theory, just because a string propagating in space time uh, that uh, it gives you a word sheet, a fundamental word sheet, and so it turns out the quantum field theory of the word sheet must always be a conformal field theory. So two-dimensional performance field theory is intimately connect, connected to string theory. Um, and, uh, and it has this nice advantage that it allows for a rigorous mathematical formulation. And particular it means that you have certain uh, conjectures that somehow arise, and this is a tool that you might be able to apply. And so uh, at, uh, a while ago, Monsters Moonshine was, um, for example, an important uh, problem just because it uh, connected this largest sporadic simple group to all the multiple forms and string theory totally exactly told you how to prove it and what the models are able to analyze. Um, so that, that was probably the first highlight of the uh, conformity theory or UAAs. Um, all the other highlights um, are really uh, related to, to the Canva structure. So then you can. Uh, quite early, you and Zyberg were able to, to axiomize what, what, what a CFP should mean. And, it, what, what, that really, and they really defined more than like that. So this was uh, Tuara and others took um, the, the Dua Zyberg paper and formalized it into more than like that. And the uh, module 10 like that is that really found its role because it's the thing that we use in order to put in place. Uh, not score means and in fact also invariance of the mean movements. So roughly speaking, that you have, for example, a, a, a knot with a three manifold associated ribbon graph, the ribbon graph with color modules of your category, and um, and, and that spells out the morphism that's written um, Okay. And um, a probably much less uh, known, but still very important highlight is that a little later, uh, Kashin and Lustig were able to connect the, the, the most basic UAs with the other ones related to FIV algebra quantum groups. That's kind of a highlight because uh, if you can imagine that every module is an dimensional uh, vector space and if the algebra action is given by the fields and if the tender product is defined by the correlation function, then it's very, very a cumbersome to understand exactly what the pattern is. A quantum group is nothing but a quantum determination of the real algebra. That means it is in, in most respect, uh, if the quantum group of the real algebra behaves the same way as the real algebra. Uh, so, so this means if you have such a correspondence, you should view it as an uh, 
yeah, as an extreme insight on on on, on the FID and evidence. And uh, and and that's in fact also my main motivation for what I'm presenting. It just turns out what I'm presenting for five years or for 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 each year for nine. Okay, so so these highlights they they were the uh, uh, still from the early days of the string theory, and then um, uh, then not much happened for a while until Kim and Rastelli and others wrote a very influential paper. Um, uh, Actually, it's not true that there were because in general there are quite a few correspondence with uh, two dimensional CFP and four dimensional dimension theories. And um, then one can translate them to all the interesting mathematics. For example, the AGT, AGT correspondence is an example of um, a four dimensional two dimensional correspondence. And uh, it translates to a certain most important lesson. The most important class of the extension is X1, the last place of instant. And um, uh, another one that uh, arises directly from the four dimensional gauge theory is the uh, quantum dramatic Langlands uh, correspondence. And you, uh, and you can formulate this in uh, two ways. It's either uh, dealing with equivalences of spaces of correlation functions of the VOA, because we will then be. Uh, uh, different spaces of WD modules on human surfaces, um, or you can achieve that simplified um, phrase in terms of categorical relations, which is they are effectively the same thing. Um, other things that um, got quite a lot of attention are that uh, they appear as invariants of three and four manifolds, and that is. In some time, modernized space uh, problems, the special case of this four manifold problem. And, um, uh, but for example, um, say in Lutov, they had the idea that uh, you, you think about that uh, a four manifold uh, has an attached invariant, which is the VOA itself. And if it has a three dimensional boundary, then to each boundary component can attach the location having the VOA. And then gluing manifolds. Is consistent with gluing the uh, A categories in kind of a higher dimension analog of what we do usually. And then Wang Song will tell us about a bit about topological recursion, which is um, an uh, yeah, alteration. So um, the representation categories um, are. For, for my perspective, most of them are related to the grading of line operators, line operators in the three-dimensional gauge theory. So yesterday we had a, had a talk about three-dimensional gauge theories, but there were any tools in parsimetric. So in that setting, the, the connection to the UAs is much less clear. Uh, clear. But if you have any for gauge symmetry, uh, super symmetry, in, in that case, um, it uh, turns out uh, that you can uh, do uh, a, a twist, but uh, this topological twist has the property that at the boundary it still has certain polynomials that affect your A's. And so that means you, you can have topologically twisted gauge theories uh, that, that still support your A's. And uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is quite nice because uh, as a physicist, you, you, of course, want to understand your structure. So the what you want to understand are the line operators and other categories, which are called to be certain like derived categories, derived by the tensor categories. And uh, now you want to have an honest model for it. So you can come up with certain geometric models of so the derived categories of the sheet on the target manifold. Um, but uh, you can also simply come up and say this category should be the, the category of uh, the UA modules because each line operator is at the end on the on a two dimensional subspace and this endpoint should this should be described by by fields of the product set or by interfinite. Um now so um so as a mathematician you, you would like to have an honest uh, 
model for both the category of line operators. And you have two choices for this. You either take a geometric road or you take a representation for it. You take, I do the latter. And uh, now, why is this a challenging thing? Basically, always these uh, categories are either finite, this is like an infinity dimension, symbols. They are not semi simple. This means not each model is a simple model. And in fact, the fact that somehow even worse, uh, this extension can be of infinite uh, So they are kind of complicated. And in fact, there's a notion of this because we have this process array of same categories. So they are up. It just means you, you can give up understanding. Uh, but maybe we don't want to understand. Um, so here's a, a the picture you right, you just think about the line operators and you can choose them or you can go across into each other and this crossing should just be isomorphic to the tensor product that should be non-trivial isomorphism and that should be exactly your commutativity isomorphism in your thing of and uh, um, so so the, yeah what I stated a few minutes uh, ago so the, the question really one wants to ask is, so what are these categories of line operators? And um, there are geometric proposals, which I didn't study, so I can't say much about this. The drawback of the geometric models, I think. Geometry, geometry is good for many things, but it's not good for we want to understand. So this is why it's a good idea to go to the UA principle and incorporate this structure that we want to have uh, immediately. So here's a picture of sort of think about it. If you think about it, we are mentioning the line operator. Here we have a good amount of subspace and the force of the vertex algebra. So the line operators end on that, and the end points is that you identify modules, maybe in the binding operators of the vertex. Now, um, um, Costello and Gagliotto, they, they propose that for the n equals 4 3 d gauge theories, um, the, 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 um, the, there's, there's this polymorphic twist that, that at the boundary, you, um, I mean, this topological twist that, uh, so that you have the boundary, you still have polymorphic objects, you still have your A's. And so one, one really wants to understand that. But, and in the very first place, this means you, you, you need some kind of, of physical intuition. What should be the VOAs that uh, appear there? And then you have to study the application category of this uh, VOAs. And then you, you and then you study whether this representation category behave as you would expect. Right? And for example, uh, so um, I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm talking to Fudo de Mosque, so he's explaining a lot and he, um, he had a good intuition what this UA should be. And so what we did is for um for these quite a billion gauge theories, um there's a concrete proposal what the UAs are, you can A plus or the B plus, and uh, the the construction of the UAs is extremely different. They are they look very different. Um and, but the interesting thing is that the category of the UA modules of the A plus. Is equivalent to the category of the deepest of the mirror to the uh, UA. So, in, in some sense, uh, they, we can use this, the, the, the category of line operator to, to test mirrors. And in fact, when I got here and invited, I, I thought I would present this result. The problem is, it's a very technical result, and the outcome is simply that these categories are equivalent. And so, I would. Uh, uh, I it would not probably not have you in the right here. So I, I thought I'd maybe better if I explain a little bit more general where categories come from because I, I think this is a very good uh, insight. So the one point of physics is uh, that uh, whatever this uh, the VOAs that come up, they somehow always allow for a nice history of the And uh, this should be key. So what now a little bit more precise what I mean by a field evaluation you have a given VOA and you have the most simplest type of 
through a support to firm and some programs so by a business organization to the embedding of your UA by the product maybe many from those on the programs or maybe something else to relate to that but still um, uh, simple enough and then uh, what you want to understand if you want to understand a certain category of e modules call it you um and uh but like, like what do we have is because the view is a sub algebra of the two field algebra this means every module of the two field algebra is at least already a new module uh, I mean, I'm not just in the room, but of course they are by far not all of them. So, uh, so, uh, so we have to go on. Anyway, we have here C, the category of um, of modules of the field algebra, and this is typically a super easy category. So, it is that it's great. It's like, I'm not doing it. Um, this is the thing. Every, I mean, it's the simplest type of tensor category you can possibly imagine. Um, and uh, so, so the question one has to ask is how is the category of interest, the category of the complicated VA, what they you? In what sense is it completely, hopefully, completely determined by C and A, by uh, how the industries, this VA lie inside this field algebra and what this field category is? And uh, the, I can give a somehow other answer. You will see that here. Um, at the end. Um, and uh, so, we, so the, what, what do you have to do is you have this real A setting that formulates a friend question. Now you have to abstract it to a categorical question, solve that question, and we're good to go. What's the abstraction is you have your small VOA that has a tensor category and uh, that uh, is a sub VOA of a bigger VOA. Now, uh, it turns out this bigger view A you can do as, a, as an algebra in the representation category. Very much as likely as at the beginning, I viewed SL2 itself as an algebra in the category of C. Of the very, 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 very. So, what is a categorical algebra? It is an object that has a multiplication there, satisfying the obvious it's axiom. So, here I put down. The assortivity just means that the multiplication is assortative. And similarly, we could call an algebra created in the multiplication. Now, um, whenever you have an algebra in a category, uh, then what, uh, what, what, what do you want? If you call it algebra, you also want to have a notion of algebra module, right? And so you can also go on with that and introduce. A modules in the category of U, so it's the category called UA. And it turns out this category always carries a tensor structure, but uh, it is not embedded in the part. So that is what I can't do what we are looking for. <laughs> However, it always has a small braided tensor category of so called local modules. And uh, in our setup, uh, this is exactly uh, so for our field algebra, we call it called A is exactly the algebra. And the, the, the super nice category C, this can be just where the vector places, something like this. This is exactly the category of local modules. So, um, so really, the, the first categorical question we want to ask is can we somehow recover U from this category UA? And then the next question we want to ask is uh, how can I how can I know what UA is by simply looking at it here? That you can understand both these things you have done. Okay, and since this is somehow uh, a little bit uh, technical, I thought I will now simply illustrate everything in one example, and then uh, give you the general example. Now, um, and there, there has a lot of, been a lot of attention uh, to this. They have also called logarithmic VOAs, but just because this one thing is simply is related to logarithmic similarity with explanation function. Um, but surprisingly, even though the subject is 30 years old, there are only two logarithmic VOAs that are understood rigorously, this one, and the so called singlet algebras that are exactly those that appear in uh, Sergei's et al. Um, so I, I don't have much choice in what I can present to you, and I thought I could do one one as a nice super algebra that already appeared very early when people were talking about how um, 
the or not and the invariants come from from and Simon's theory on a few theory. And uh, it was also more or less the first example of a probability of CFP. And then still, uh, if our statistical physicists had studied it. But uh, you, you see, rigorously, it was only you know, very, very recently ended just because um, uh, all the technology is actually better. Anyway, it's an example that I can give you. That's a nice thing. One sees many things immediately in this book. So, uh, uh, so it's a super algebra, but GL11 does uh, stand for the real super algebra of, uh, of uh, super two by two modules. And then it, has, it has even and hot dimension two, so the diagonal one matrix is are even, even ones with the hot diagonal hot, with the immediate two of the location relations, which are described in particular. And I only wrote down the non zero ones from particular angle to the relation in the center, which you could have guessed from. And then, and, uh, and now you can write down the representation. Well, what you can do is you, you, you take a, a highest weight vector for, for your carbon and sub algebra. And then um, you have these two odd ones. So, in highest weight means uh, it will be annihilated by. One of, uh, one of these odd elements and the other one can act freely, but the odd is just to zero. So this means each of these drama modules is a two dimension. And uh, because uh, the commutator of uh, the, the two odd elements just gets rid of central element E, the, it's clear that if the central element acts by zero, then this two dimension module is not very useful. And uh, so then it, that means you, you immediately get nice examples, two dimensional modules that have one dimensional top module and a one dimensional portion. And uh, you're almost already done with understanding the finite uh, representation theory of the finite dimension we have to algebra in this case. The only uh, question is now are there any extensions of these one dimensional modules? Any more that you don't see here? And um, the answer is. Well, there is an obvious one because what can you do with it? You know, study, start with some kind of generating vectors and let the central element act by zero and let the odd, odd part act freely. And we have two odd elements, so they can act freely so that it gives you a four dimensional module. And, uh, and uh, it, it will be a four dimensional module that has, is, uh, um, uh, has a simple sub module. It's a portion by a bit that has a direct sum of two symbols and two portions again. So you pop up the points again, one of these simple models. So you, one, one likes to unfold this in these what's called the Milby diagram, just because you can immediately see the structure and one wide definition. And, uh, and now, what one usually, so, uh, so there's a usual dictionary where you, you study the representation theory of the finite time in the algebra, then you study the representation theory of the F and the algebra. And then to any F and E algebra, it's also a vertex algebra, and you, uh, you decide which representations I inherit to the vertex algebra. So in this case, it comes out all representations of the F and E algebra are inherited. And if you pass from the E algebra to the F and ones, what you just do is you do is you take the loop, loop algebra and essentially extend that so that having now one element for N E plus plus by minus. You have the NR, SDS, etc. There are related to the other integers and these are all implementation variants. Um, the interesting thing here is uh, that um, the uh, it, it turns out the representation theory of this F and algebra is enormously sim uh, similar. So that means uh, the generic uh, rate labels you have induced Verma models are uh, just similar and projective. Nothing interesting happens. It's just that uh, these these uh, four uh, these, these projective models of four composition factors. Uh, before you only had one such module for each n, but now you have uh, one such type of module for each n and each n is a n. You have certain bigger n. It's kind of nice the representation here of the one one is uh, completely inherited. For the final and then you, you pass to the vertex algebra. And the, I, yeah, I'm just writing down the OPE form of the generating fields to give you some, some flavor of what's happening now. 
Okay. Now, uh, now uh, the question you want to ask is not only what is the representation category of this uh, FMD algebra, of this FM vertex algebra as a feeling category, but that's a very simple answer, but you want to un understand what it is as a feeling category. And this goes as follows. Um, so now you, you take, you need to find a field realization. And in this case, it turns out for each uh, generator, you need a field, and for the even one, you need a field ozone, for the top ones, uh, the fermions, but the field of the first time, the basic bosons, then the second order for the first one, the first one, the first one, the first one, the first and then you, one can quickly compute that with have in that and get the values. And in fact, you, 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 you get this formula relatively quickly if you compute the realization of finite field on one finite variant of the value. Now, now next, next, you want to understand whether the sub algebra is somehow nicely characterized. And, uh, and that you Kind of get from physics because the physics from the field theory is the best in the written theory, and this best in the written theory is a lower order of the perfect order uh, formulation, and that for order formulation is really gives you the Lagrangian of these two fields together with the interaction. And uh, the mathematician calls this interaction from the spinning charge, and what it is is just the zero mode effect in that final. And uh, then one can check that uh, in fact this embedding is precisely the kernel of the final operator acting on this field. Okay, so and, and uh, the point I want to make is that um, the, that the category of field one one is completely determined by the field algebra together with the knowledge of the screen. So this is kind of what replaces the uh, of the what is the key here. So first of all, the, the field algebra is extremely simple. For example, if you go on, what are its simple modules that are box modules? This is the first thing that you learn in a in a form of field theory or your A form. And, and the handout for that is uh, is just added and addition in the labels. In particular, the cost of the category is nothing but heavy of graded vector spaces, but with a non-trivial uh, uh, grading, which is uh, a total image of this is really as easy as a tensor category. Uh, and, uh, so it would probably be one of the first ones. I mean, what, what you would see that very, very, very quickly in the tensor category. Okay. So, um, but we want to get a complicated uh, category. So we cannot, uh, you need to sum that and introduce some a little bit more complicated. And that, this is called the Nichols algebra of screen. So, uh, and what uh, the Nichols algebra, uh, what, what, what is it? When, when one has this screen uh, child, what is algebra of interest is uh, characterized as the kernel. And this uh, screening chart itself is square for zero, and it, it is an intertwiner uh, associated to a certain module of the field algebra. So, this means you, you identify uh, this uh, screening chart. With uh, generating an algebra, then that's the, uh, the, the algebra generated by x with relation x squared with the zero. Uh, very simple and important algebra, but now uh, as an algebra in your category, which it just means you really think about it as uh, the algebra generated by, by one of these modules, but uh, by, by, by the multiplication of the zero. And in particular, you can now think about what kind of models can you generate. Uh, you can have a uh, kind of part of the uh, of modules, the kinds of determinants, and act with your Nichols algebra generated. And uh, it gives you another model in the right level changes because um, your, your Nichols algebra generator carries a, carries a weight. And uh, but because it's square for uh, you, your, your extending has to terminate upwards and it's better. Not, not the most, uh, and, and, and with this, you uh, already completely understand the abelian category of modules, Nichols algebra, 
inside the vocabulary of the head of the class and it, it turns out now this vocabulary of Nicholas algebra representation uh, it is a kind of category but not divided. Okay, now the point, uh, what is the point? Um, you have uh, the inside the Canva caddy, and um, Canva caddy people know very well if you want to pass from a Canva caddy to a greater Canva caddy, you, you, you somehow double it to go to what is called the center. And uh, and then if you have a sub category in this, uh, uh, in this uh, center, you can also look at the centralizer, which gives you another. Uh, which is then just called relative center. So this is a very well known purely categorical construction. And, uh, and so that, uh, 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 that the point here is simply you have a prefused realization inside uh, this means you have an extremely simple category. You have a Nicholas algebra, and this Nicholas algebra um, defines the uh, attendant category, namely the relative center. Relative with respect to the, the category of modules. Now, why is this so interesting? Because uh, if relative Brunfeld centers are, are realized by the project, the Brunfeld models that can realize the algebras of modules. And it's a very quick uh, computation that for this Nichols algebra, the re realizing quantum group is equal to the quantum group 211, and this H means that's the uh, um, so in particular, um, we have a theorem that is the presentation category of the FMBA of P11, the same thing as the one of the kind of a very good theorem in the sense uh, that uh, the VOA is something very hard to do, but um, the quantum dual 1 1 is um, it's really easy to uh, so not, not a big deal. And uh, the, the main reason why our theorem works is because we are able to show that this category of A modules is the same thing. And of course, we didn't want to prove that we won one statement. The point is it's a general statement. So, the, uh, so the, and, and this is the whole point here of the remark here at the point of the. So the. So if an unfortunately very big amount of assumption holds, then, um, uh, and, and we have a VUA, very much like the presented one, that embeds into uh, a nicer VUA, for example, of the algebra, then uh, the category of the modules of the VUA is uh, equivalent for this category uh, of the modules given by the, uh, um, by, by the Likert's algebra determined by the Now, in practice, the, the, the big caveat is that provided the series of technical assumptions can be verified, those with many, many that I effectively do, trying to develop a theory that kind of guarantees uh, these assumptions. But um, you can also take the standpoint of your accuracy. What would the physicists say? Well, that it, it would kind of be the axioms of uh, your, your, your conformity theory that uh, that all these natural uh, assumptions are satisfied. And then our statement would simply say, um, um, well, our statement uh, says even if you can't uh, uh, verify these assumptions, we simply our, our statement it defines the category and we, uh, just by having this constitute realization together with this screening charters that immediately get you a Nicholas algebra, then you immediately have an associated notation category, which uh, looks funny because for you, this is just a, a bunch of symbols. Uh, but, but the point is these, these categories of yet adventure modules are as explicit as it is. So it's, a, it's a very, in particular, you can uh, relatively easily write down and realize and Algebra and the fusions in for the of algebra and good case of the case of fusions. Um, and, and, and in particular, so for, for, for me, it means I immediately have a conjecture of what the category should be, and it's an extremely safe conjecture. And in particular, since all these physics uh, categories, for example, the, the, these, uh, these VOAs, uh, 
uh, associated with these page theories. Uh, it essentially always allows uh, for complete realizations. It, it, it means we we know what the category should be, and uh, so we, we, we know what it should be working with, and that's a kind of nice rule. Okay, um, one more uh, remark. I um, so I, I presented this because I, I effectively have thought about the question for the last few yeah, years. I, I want uh, I, I want to prove of course, what Tasha Mushti called online person, like online person, of the can can look at it on your A's and all the other things. Um, but I also uh, kind of like physics a lot, and uh, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm talking a lot with, with Google, and he uh, had this excellent PhD student with Leonard and Lewis, who's now the readers of the postdoc. And, uh, and so we have a, we have a program. Um, and um, so, so recently, the we showed that the mirror system, mirror symmetry for this energy for the H is the stronger processing of equivalence of the greater tensor categories of line operators and the abelian case. Um, but uh, as I mentioned uh, before, these uh, categories of line operators also have, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, have some geometric models. And um, uh, and, uh, and, and you, you want to con connect those. And, we very much believe um, that, um, I mean, it, it's very hard to connect directly a vertex algebra uh, to, to, to some category of coherent sheets or so. Um, but uh, what, what turns out is um, we have geometric models that translate into matrix factorization. There you have some total duality, and that turns out. Uh, you can use uh, that to extract out the hemorrhagic region of and, uh, and in, in, a, in a toy model, we already see that it's the same as the one that uh, that we get at the dual one for the UA. And so, um, I think our program at the moment is to put two flaws, which was means that whatever our view and we have three field realizations. The, uh, the spinning chart, so we know what the other uh, input model is. So we write down and realize how the hot technology and now we resolve the matrix factorization. We study what kind of uh, algebra we can extract there. And, and that, I find this, well, because I find this nice on the Okay, uh, yeah, thank you very much for your attention. All right, thank you very much. Um, we have time for questions. Oh, oh they never unitary. They can't be unitary. Um, so, um, also not. Um, oh, wait. They are also not ordinary. No. Uh, so the associated varieties they uh, correspond to the fixed branches of the gauge theory. So that's why you are asking this question, and they are sort of projected varieties. And um, so I didn't look at this, but they have been treated. Yeah, so that would no, I, I I didn't look at this, but I I would know how to. That wouldn't be. And in fact, for I think for, for the beat system, the bond of zero A is just an F and super zero A, a very, very unusual one. In that case, the 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 fixed uh, the fixed branch is just a function. Uh, you had this very basic, uh, this basic example that you said this is well understood, and you have this exact sequence. Maybe you can go to the slide. So, did I understand you correctly that this representation? Uh, I, I think it was, yeah, there, there, there. Did I understand you correctly that this PN then uh, is a representation that I can think of algorithmic? 
CFT. Mm -hmm. So this PN, does that correspond to a logarithmic CFT? Yeah. And how would I now see that I get logarithmic from, can I see from the sequence that the correlation function has these logarithmic branch cuts easily? Yeah, um, you, you can uh, already expect that. So um, the, the logarithmic uh, correlation functions arrive right, so, um the exponents in the, in the, 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 so usually the exponents in the correlation functions are completely specified by, um, by conformal values, that means by zero, so zero more H. Um, and you get a logarithmic singularities whenever the zero, so zero more plus no X is or the conformal weight of the data exponentiating the conformal weight is exactly the ribbon just in the category. And so this means uh, a logarithmic singularity comes from non things in the ribbon twist. But what is the ribbon twist? It's a morphism on the model. So what, are, what are the endomorphisms on the end of the identity? So the ribbon twist will be a multiple of the identity. But then you also have a new form, uh, morphism of the next year, the top to the soccer. Turn around and, and everything else to zero. So that means uh, if you knew what the ribbon twist is, for which, for example, for the quantum that you know, then you would immediately compute that it does not have the same quantity here, and then you would know the ribbon twist in the Very nice question. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, I don't see any. Well, let us thank our people on the And we take a minute to